folks, The Bar Dad here, and welcome to this episode of Adulting at the Bar. Today's episode is based on your, your... Hey folks, The Bar Dad here, and welcome to Adulting at the Bar. Today's episode is based on your feedback, you lovely, lovely viewers out there in Bar Dad world. You asked me, hey, Bar Dad... I want to build a home bar. I want to start a home bar. I've that. And a lot of you want to know, hey, how do I start a home? A ha, ha, why is that word so difficult? Many of you had sent in emails to the bar at gmail.com or commented on Instagram or the YouTube or the or the, the YouTube. It's on the internet. Hey, Google. Uh, <laughs> Many of you have sent in questions to the Instagram. Order, order. This whole damn bar is out of order. Many of you have commented on Instagram, on YouTube, or sent me an email at thebardad at gmail.com and asked me, Bardad, hey, I want to start a home bar. Home bar. <laughs> Wondering, hey, Bardad, I want to build a home bar. How do I do it? Well, you know what? Pull up a chair and we'll talk about it. It's the bar, Dad. Alrighty, folks, it wouldn't be an episode of The Bar Dad if I didn't talk about booze and take a drink here and there. But I want to first talk about what are some of the types of booze you want to start your home bar with? You know, what are, what are the basics, right? And as you know, if you're a watcher and you're a viewer and a fan and just you have a little Bar Dad altar in your closet with a lock of my hair. By the way, if you write to bardad at gmail.com, I'll send you a lock of my hair so you can build like the little altar thing. If you want to start, right, if you want if you want to know about the different things, I recommend watching the episode, The Booze Tour. I go into details of the different types and what I prefer and what are the different kinds and, and, and what to start with. So I'm going to do kind of a high level. But if you've watched The Bar Dad, you know it's all about what you are interested in, what you like. But when you're setting up a home bar, you also want to kind of think of what your friends like too. And you want to make sure that you kind of round things off and have a little bit of everything that to start with. So if somebody comes in and wants something, you probably have something close to satisfy. So what I have here is a selection of booze that uh, I would recommend kind of starting your home bar with. So the first thing I would start with is, is a good mixing whiskey. Something that uh, can either be drinking straight, drinking, drunken, drunken, drank. Is that a word? Drank? I guess it is drank straight, right? Or mixed. Maker's Mark is a good one of those. Uh, and you, if you also are a Scotch fan or a, a small batch whiskey fan and you want a little sipping stuff too, you know, go ahead and pick up something like this. So if your friends don't want to mix the brown liquor in a Coke or something like that or a sour mix, um, you can offer something to sip. Always recommend tequila. Uh, tequila is a great thing to have around uh, uh, with some fruit juices and, and uh, maybe a margarita mix if somebody wants to have a margarita, uh, or even tequila shots with some lime and salt, or do booze yoga. Don't forget to watch that episode as well. Uh, gin is also a good thing to hang around. You know I'm a big fan of St. Augustine gin. Uh, you can also, we're going to talk about mixers in a second, have some gin and tonic. You can get gin and uh, soda, uh, and also some limes uh, with that as well. Uh, you need a good accessible vodka uh, that is good for mixing everything. You know I recommend Tito's as that entry-level vodka here. I would recommend some rums. Now, you could go with a, uh, a clear rum like this uh, to mix like with mojitos and, and rum and Cokes and things like that. Uh, but I'm more of a tiki drink guy. That's going to be an upcoming episode. So I would recommend going with something. Uh, for me, I like the, the, the darker rums. So go with a good mixing rums to make some dark and stormies. Uh, you can actually mix this in rum and coke, and also a good sipping rum, too, uh, or a higher-end rum to go with your tiki mixes. The other thing I would recommend is probably picking up a bottle of something like Kahlua, Amaretto, Frangelico, a little after-dinner liqueur. For people that don't necessarily like this uh, type of booze, uh, this is a little more accessible. Uh, we call them after-dinner drinks, where you can have a little something-something after dinner. You know, you're sitting around kind of chilling. Uh, and it also makes a great mixer for things as coffee and so forth. So this is what I recommend to start your home bar with in terms of the booze. Next thing we have to talk about, accoutrement. 
mixtures. Things that go with, that you can mix your drinks with, that you can accompany your drinks, spice them up a little bit, and create some interesting craft cocktails. So what I've got here is a selection of some of the things that you might want to have. And again, it's based on what you like or what you know your friends like. So obviously you need to have some things to mix with. So I have here, I have some ginger beer uh, to make some dark and stormies, uh, some Moscow mules. So it's a very versatile, very kind of in drink. Uh, Y'all, you hipster people up there, you know, uh, they don't call them hipster people anymore. All you youngins, you know, uh, but have some ginger beer around because a lot of people like drinking that. Uh, some Coca-Cola, some 7-Up, some Sprite uh, is also a good thing. You can mix several things. I actually know a guy that mixes vodka and Coke, right? But you never know what your friends like. Also recommend uh, having some tonic water all around and also some club soda or some uh, seltzer water uh, because you can have gin with this, you can have uh, vodka with this with some fresh limes and uh, that's always a great way to uh, go. Uh, you also want to pick up potentially if, if you like Bloody Marys or you, your friends like Bloody Marys and you got a good vodka, pick up some olives, some pickles, some pickled Brussels sprouts, asparagus, okra and of course a good Bloody Mary mix. Uh, uh, and it's, it's celery, you know, things that go with it, lemons, limes, you know, you name it. Uh, but it's kind of good to have around, uh, keep in the fridge. Who knows when you might want a good Bloody Mary. Obviously, pickle juice. If you've seen the episode, you know I'm a big fan of pickle juice for your picklebacks. Uh, now I'll get into some of the, the craft things here. Uh, what I've got here is a couple, uh, a couple uh, uh, bottles of bitters. I've got some... Um, uh, Angostura aromatic bitters. I've got some orange bitters here, uh, both very, very good for uh, making old fashions, uh, Sazeracs, things like that. Um, I've got some simple syrup. This I made myself, and it's one part sugar, one part water, boil in the stove until it gets clear. Uh, you can put this in a lot of mixed drinks. You can use this in old fashions. You use this a lot in tiki drinks uh, as well. <clears throat> you may want to pick yourself up some good cherries. Now, I know people out there in the bar world, remember, I'm not an expert. I'm also not rich, uh, so people are like, well, they're not, you know, the uh, the uh, Luxardo cherries. Yeah, those things are like $100 an ounce. So uh, I like Bada Bing cherries, they're pretty good, good syrups in there. But what you want to do is you want to collect a little bit of things to have around. If somebody doesn't like to drink it straight, you've got an option. Some fruit juices are also a big help uh, just to kind of round out your bar and to make sure that you have something that's suitable and uh, pleasurable for the people that come over to your house uh, and engage in your own bar. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about the tools of the trade. I've got in front of me here some different items, some different tools that you could add to your home bar to create a great experience. Um, I'm a kind of guy that loves people coming to my home bar. I love sitting down and like educating them about booze, uh, having them try new things, expand their booze horizons, try different types of drinks. And these tools help me do that. So if you're somebody that likes to be that entertainer, likes to have you know, a good sense of hospitality and likes to bring people in, having these different types of tools can help you do that and make you look cool at the same time because, you know. Uh, so the first thing I want to talk about is you need ice. We talked about ice in the second episode. Uh, so please watch Ice Ice Baby. But you need a good ice bucket uh, that you can get. If you're lucky enough, I am not, to have like an ice maker right at the bar that makes clear ice. Uh, which is really, really cool. Don't have that. So get yourself an ice bucket and then either have a scoop or the tongs to do the individual pieces on that. So ice bucket. Next, you need a mixing glass. Now, this is something that will allow you to mix your drinks in here, put some ice in here, put some mixed drinks, the bitters and the whatever you're using, and then get yourself a bar spoon. Now, bar spoons are really cool. Uh, they're twisted so you can keep them in your hand and it allows you to mix what you have in this glass. Now, bar spoons, this is what a 12 inch bar spoon, you can get bar spoons that are this long. I think you're just compensating for something if you need a bar spoon that long. So I go, because I'm confident, you know, with, with a pretty decent size. Uh, this one I like because it has a fork on the end of it. And you can also use this to stab those damn cherries that get at the bottom of the glass or the jar and you can't get to them or the olives. So this provides kind of a dual thing. You got the spoon, on one end and you got the fork on the other. So you need a good bar spoon. You also need this thing. Now I know there's a name for it. I don't know. I, don't, I told you I'm not an expert. But what it is, it's important because when you make your drink and you, in your mixing glass and you got your ice in it, you put this over and you pour that into your glass, keeping the ice in here. It also works when you have, and we'll get to the shakers in a second, when, you have, when you're pouring out of a shaker that doesn't have a strainer on top. So you need one of these. 
You also need a muddler, and that's especially if you like making uh, drinks with sugar cubes or fresh fruit or mojitos, where you put the ingredients in the glass and you muddle them down. So this helps you do it. I know some people like the metal ones. You can get them in, in stainless steel with rubber ends, uh, but something to kind of crush the hell out of whatever you got in the glass to help you make those better drinks. Right, next, I have a scotch and soda jigger of gin. It's a jigger. And what it is, it's a measuring device for um, measuring alcohol. And if you remember last week uh, where we talked uh, with Lauren, the bartender, and we talked about how bartenders use this to measure the amount of alcohol, especially if you're using, uh, like if you're at a bar, right, and you have, and you're measured and you have to make sure that you're right on, use one of these. But also these are important for mixing like tiki drinks because tiki drinks and, and things like old fashions require a very specific amount of every different ingredient in there. So this one, is a one ounce on this side, and it's a two ounce on this side, and you can get different sizes. Uh, evidently, there's Japanese versions, which are thin and tall, and a lot of people like those uh, instead. So again, personal choice, but having one of these is gonna help you, especially with those very detailed drinks that you need to make. Tiki drinks, uh, as well as uh, like things like mojitos and, and fresh limes, you need a good juicer right here. Uh, and uh, this is something, it's lime green, because that's mostly what goes in it. And uh, this is good for those uh, specific drinks as well. So the next thing I want to talk about is shakers here. And I got a couple of shakers that I want to talk about. This one here is owned, or owned, <laughs> I own it actually. It's not on loan from the Smithsonian. Uh, this is by Bacardi. And I like it because I'm going to show you a picture here. It actually has the muddler. This, this thing here, it's got uh, a, a big pointy spiky thing in there that when you put fruit and things in there to shake, it actually muddles it for you. Uh, kind of a neat uh, gift that's got... Uh, uh, rubber end on here to hold on to it and you put your drinks in there you know like Tom Cruise and cocktail and you flip it around. Oh, that's a beep um, and then I've got this one here where you put it in here but it has a little strainer on the end of it so you don't need whatever this thing you know the, the name of the strainer is but you don't need that because it keeps the ice in the thing so again just some samples of what you need uh, to make the home bar uh, to get started I would also recommend getting yourself maybe a little cart, uh, a tray, or something that you can wheel into maybe the living room or the kitchen and have everything kind of right there. It's also a great place to put your glasses, get yourself a nice bar cart, uh, and, uh, and start entertaining that way. You gotta start somewhere. I think I started with a bottle of brandy at one time, and that turned into what you see behind me here. So uh, brandy evidently is a gateway booze, so stay away from brandy, no, just kidding. But again, just wanted to show you some of the tools that I use uh, to entertain at my bar. So please find us on Facebook. So please find us on Instagram, The Bar Dad. Find us on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment, please, on those YouTube videos. And don't forget to email us your questions, your comments, your smart remarks to thebardad at gmail.com. And hey, you're always welcome at The Bar Dad's Bar. Till next time, keep your friends close and your muddler closer. Ciao. It's the bar dad.